Hello and welcome everyone. We're really glad to have you here today for our weekly OCI deep dive. For anyone that might be new to these events, we're hosted on Cloud Customer Connect, which is our Oracle community forum for end users. I'll be sharing some links throughout that will lead you back to those forums. And if you're not already a member, we invite you to create a free account, join in discussions, post your questions, look for upcoming events on all kinds of topics. My name is Kenna Ketrick. I'm a program manager with the OCI go-to-market team. And today I'm joined by principal data scientist Praveen Patil and Ranjit Gupta, uh, principal member of technical staff. And they're going to take us through the new OCI data labeling service. I think that is quite enough from me. So Praveen, go ahead and take it away. It's all yours. Sure. Thank you, Kenna. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining this uh, webcast. Uh, uh, on OCI data labeling. So as I said, my name is Praveen and I'll be joined uh, today by my colleague Ranjit and we'll uh, talk to you about uh, you know, this new service that we recently launched. So in terms of uh, agenda, uh, you know, we will first, uh, I will first go through the introduction, give you a context, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, what we are building at OCI, what, uh, what is, uh, you know, Oracle AI and, and how kind of data labeling fits in that ecosystem. And then I will give you an overview of the service, what we currently have, uh, and, and briefly talk about, uh, you know, some upcoming things that we have in the service plan. And then we will go through a demo. Uh, I'll walk you through a cons within the console, uh, show you how, uh, you know, uh, the where OCI data labeling sits, what are its key features uh, and capabilities. And then I will walk you uh, walk uh, through the, you know, the integration that we have with AI services, uh, uh, you know, with, with the vision service. And then, uh, you know, uh, you can, how you can, uh, you know, build uh, a simple use case uh, driven by simple use case. You can build, uh, you know, a custom uh, AI model. And then my, my colleague Ranjit will walk through uh, you know the integration that we have with OCI data science, and lastly we will leave you with uh, resources that uh, you can go at, uh, go out and and, and check more uh, about the service and and, uh, and and try it out. So uh, you know, as uh, many of you might have been aware, right? Uh, you know, and, and personally for for me too, uh, coming from uh, being a practitioner in data science for so many years, it's always true, right? Data is the key, uh, and uh, we know uh, most most of the time, uh, you know, whenever, whenever you are doing any uh, uh, you know AI ML project, it all starts with data. You're kind of uh, you know um, most of the time is 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 uh, involved in getting the right data. Uh, you know, preparing the data before you can even uh, build an ML model. And, and uh, uh, you know, as truly said by Professor Andrew, right, who is kind of well-respected, if, if most of the time is uh, is, is uh, spent in data preparation, then having quality data before you can build any, uh, you know, uh, AI ML applications is of paramount uh, importance. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, as, as you can see, right, uh, the, uh, uh, Within, I'll not spend a lot of time uh, in in here. Uh, within Oracle, uh, right? We uh, Oracle was always uh, in uh, you know in in the database uh, business, right? They they were actually uh, working with a lot of customer data, but over time, what has happened is uh, you know we have grown uh, in uh, with the amount of digital footprint that is being created. It's been uh, grown into semi-structured and unstructured data, where now organizations uh, you know want to use uh, you know data not that is there in within the databases, but also munch that or, or join it with the semi-structured data and the unstructured data so they can, you know, uh, create or generate, uh, you know, uh, business, new business insights and value to the organizations. So in terms of uh, Oracle AI, so, uh, you know, before I go into the service, I want to uh, kind of mention where, uh, you know, uh, the, our service, the labeling service sits, right? Uh, so if you see here, right, this is uh, Oracle AI. So this is basically a portfolio of cloud services, uh, you know, uh, that organizations can take advantage, uh, you know, uh, for, for building their next generation, uh, you know, AI ML applications. As you can see, everything starts with data and on the top you have applications, right? So the foundation is all data. So, uh, and, and then, you know, um, I, as you can see between these applications, right, there are machine learning services and then there are AI services. So machine learning services are uh, nothing but, uh, you know, these are mainly catered towards, uh, you know, citizen data scientists. So we have OCI data science, then we have uh, database machine learning uh, within the database, and then we have this new service, uh, you know, uh, data labeling. So these are uh, mainly catered towards, uh, you know, uh, personas who, th these are the, 
I would say like building blocks so where you can, you know, uh, build your own machine learning models or, uh, or uh, spend time, uh, you know, uh, doing the data preparation or creating the data, right? And then top of that, you have our, uh, you know, API driven services, which are more higher level, right? These are, uh, you know, uh, these AI services are designed to be uh, catering towards the you know the developers and they don't need any uh, data science expertise right so uh, you know whenever uh, you know you, um, you you have a developer persona that wants to uh, you know build a speech model or a vision model or, or anomaly detection model they can use that but whenever there is a need uh, of customization for uh, for these models right then uh, you know either it is a developer persona or a data center persona they need to generate uh, label they need to have uh, label data and that's where labeling uh, you know service will come into play So before I go into uh, you know um, uh, what are your supporting services, so so it's it's not just uh, you know the AI services or uh, you know the machine learning services that we have, but you know Oracle also offers uh, you know uh, these other uh, data management uh, services that are that are also required to bring the data in house, right? Uh, either from different sources, and that's where you know we have these data management services in house, uh, right? Then we also have uh, the integration services uh, in house. So I just wanted to briefly show uh, uh, showcase that, right? It's uh, it, it's it's the it's the full uh, you know um, it's, it's a full life cycle where you, you are spending time to bring in the data and then uh, you know creating value uh, either uh, through machine learning services or through AI services. So now let's uh, dive uh, deep into what is uh, labeling services and uh, you know why is it required. So if you think about it, right, uh, you know, there is a lot of talk uh, around the industry right now, uh, uh, right? It's, it's about uh, how do we, uh, you know, uh, achieve AI ops or ML ops. So uh, you, you want to, uh, and it's uh, AI or ML ops is very iterative process, right? And it all starts with uh, defining a project. Once you define what you want to achieve, when you want to uh, build an AI ML applications, uh, you kind of have defined that, then, it, then the next uh, phase is uh, collect and enrich data. And especially in the world of, uh, you know, unstructured data, you know, and, and and most of it we know right now it's unstructured data that is being created bec because of the digital footprint uh, that we have, right? Uh, so you need to have, uh, you know, a, a platform where you can go in and consistently uh, create a labeled data set and they, these are of high quality. Once you have collected uh, and, and, and reached your data, that then you're going to do some, uh, you know, uh, uh, wrangling of data and analyze your data before you can build or train a machine learning model. When you've done that, then you deploy and then you monitor. And once you, uh, you know, you're, you've, you've, uh, you've deployed your model based on that, uh, you know, the data drift or model drift, you know, the, the process uh, continues. So as you can see, it all starts with uh, you know ensuring uh, ha ensuring having uh, good quality data. Either uh, you know it could be your speech data, text data, uh, right, video data, or uh, you know image uh, 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 data documents, right. So where so what is data labeling then? So data labeling is nothing but where you're kind of uh, you know it, it, it's a process of you're identifying certain properties and then you're uh, and and these properties are labels, right, and then you're and rotating them uh, uh, with these properties. So as you can see, data labeling kind of plays a very important part in this whole life cycle and then and, 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 and it's, it's always going to be an iterative process. So in, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the data labeling market itself, it's, it's very huge and it's, it's uh, expected to uh, grow rapidly just because of the amount of, uh, you know, data that is being collected uh, everywhere, right? You have social media data, you have tweets, you know, you have news articles. So it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, growing in size. So, and, and then it's not just one industry, right? It kind of spans across uh, multiple industries, right? You have uh, retail, you have manufacturing, insurance. So you can think of, uh, you know, in the manufacturing industry where you want to do inventory management, management and you want to understand how do you shelve your product uh, you know uh, products within the shelves 
and you want to do uh, you know uh, uh, some some kind of crowd counting or object counting uh, of of your uh, inventory within the shelves right and you could apply you know vision techniques to uh, kind of uh, you know automatically uh, you know count these these uh, uh, you know these uh, items within your shelf then there is safety detection right uh, that that's preventive maintenance or safety detection within manufacturing then when you go into uh, retail or e-commerce industry there is product categorization uh, and and um, uh, you know uh, content moderation right and then uh, those are in the realm of images right but when you talk about text uh, again text uh, is where you're trying to get uh, voice uh, you know a customer feedback voice of customer right where you're trying to understand the sentiment analysis uh, of, of the customer you want to try to understand what, what are the themes or topics that are uh, popping up uh, week over week over week month over month and it, it, it can span uh, across multiple industries and then same thing with healthcare right you want to do uh, you know uh, you want to understand uh, you know objects uh, within your images or do uh, drug research right so this is where you know you have uh, you, need, you need to do image analysis or image classification and uh, you know you need to have labeled data sets before you can build any customized solutions So with respect to, uh, you know, uh, the, the vision that we have with, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the daily labeling service, right, we want to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, it, it, we want to make sure the labeling service is catering towards, uh, you know, requirements for all, uh, all, all uh, you know, use cases that come from AI services where there is customization that is required or internal customers that want to go and, uh, you know, uh, build, uh, you know, uh, these these uh, applications within unstructured world right so that's uh, you know that that's our use case so so what we want to make sure is we want to make sure you know customers can bring up their data they can store their data you know we have very good offerings right and then they're able to uh, you know uh, deliver business value uh, to to uh, once they do the annotation they can deliver business value on that so with respect to data labeling service, there's basically three components, right? One is, uh, you know, if you can think of it, we, we all know it's it's an expensive affair. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time, uh, right? So this there is, uh, you know, the simple and fast use case where you have uh, a minimal set of uh, images and, and text, and then you want to build your classification model or object detection model within within few number, within, uh, you know, uh, Two to three steps, you're able to ingest the data, do the annotation, and then export it, and then use it uh, to build your, uh, you know, um, either vision model or text model. Right. Then there is uh, there is a cost aspect, right? The cost is where you know now you have uh, you know uh, hundreds and thousands of images or, or text, and you want to use some kind of uh, assisted labeling, right? And then and the and the third call third aspect is the quality, and this this actually uh, is, is is very very important. So this is where you're trying to uh, you know reduce the bias that is inherently there in the system right so so the, the 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 reason why I wanted to throw this uh, slide is uh, right now uh, you know as a service right we have uh, start we have kind of taken the simple and fast use case and then try to broaden it uh, where you can ap apply these uh, you know the the labeling uh, uh, you know in, 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 for different uh, formats and then solve for the simple and fast use use case and then we'll build on to address the cost and quality components. So uh, the initial, uh, you know, the labeling service was launched uh, about uh, five months ago. So this is mainly catering towards a simple and fast use case uh, where customers can use the UI or, uh, you know, they can go through the API route to upload the images, uh, text, documents, and then annotate them within the labeling UI. And then, uh, you know, once they have done the annotation, export it and use it, uh, you know, across uh, the portfolio of services, either through our data science service or through the AI services to uh, build a, a custom, uh, you know, custom model for their specific use case. So, so right now we have three capabilities uh, or basically, uh, you know, three data types that uh, we support. We, we allow you to do image labeling where you can add uh, you know, um, single or multiple labels for images, or you can draw bounding boxes uh, over those uh, objects within the images. 
And then once this is done, you can basically use it to build a custom classification or object detection model. The next is text. Same thing. You can do, uh, you know, you can do a classification or text for sentiment analysis, or you can, uh, you know, um, highlight the, you know, the spans within the your text where you can then use it to build a custom, uh, you know, uh, entity extraction models. And the third is a document where you know you have documents in PDF or TIFF format, and you can uh, allow. Uh, you basically, uh, you know, these could be your purchases invoices and this is then used to build a custom document classification model so now uh, you know we have talked about what the capabilities are so who would be using the service right what are the personas so as as i mentioned earlier when i was talking about the machine learning services that are there and uh, and then you have ai services so the labeling service uh, can actually uh, you know uh, be used by data scientists so data scientists uh, you know they want to build their own uh, custom nlp uh, you know um, uh, custom NLP models, or they want to build their own deep learning models uh, for computer vision or, uh, you know, for a classification use case, that they would then use the labeling uh, service to annotate these images or text or documents and, and export them uh, in, into, uh, you know, in, and we'll, we'll talk about the different formats that we have, export them and, and then use them with our OCI data science uh, service in the Jupyter Lab environment and build their own custom models. Or you have developers who don't have a, a lot of background in data science, uh, right? These are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, don't have a, a, a you know background in data science or machine learning. They can go in, uh, do the annotation. Uh, you know, they can assemble the data and and then uh, you know use it. Uh, uh, you know, within AI services. So I will. I'll. I'll and when when we go through the demo, <clears throat> I'll, I'll kind of uh, you know you'll you'll be able to see you know how what are the integration points we have uh, provided for both of the personas. So in terms of, uh, you know, the those are the integrations. So what what are those integrations? What do we actually mean by those integrations, right? So here, uh, you know, uh, you know, as I said, uh, right now it's integrated with vision service. So what it means is once you have uh, done the annotation, these, uh, you know, these data sets, uh, these labeling, uh, annotated labeling data sets are easily consumed, or uh, you can consume them with uh, with the vision service. There need to be no transformations that need to be applied, right? It's easily accepted. We work, we have worked with, uh, you know, our sister organizations within AI services to make sure, uh, you know, these, uh, these uh, data formats are, uh, you know, uh, can be easily consumed, right? So also then there is a path uh, within, and, uh, you know, you'll see that within the demo uh, where, uh, within the console, you can you know uh, quickly go and pick uh, you know the uh, the data, data labeling data sets within that workflow and, uh, and 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 then build a custom model. So that is with the AI services, and then with the data science service, right? What we do is we uh, right now once you do the annotation, we allow you to export in our proprietary JSON format that is there. But you know it could be that uh, you know the data scientists want to build their own. Uh, uh, they, they, they they probably are want to use their own ML framework, right? They want to build uh, a, a, a Yolofi model, right? Uh, Yolo V5 model, right? They want to build uh, you know a spacey model using uh, spacey library using uh, you know um, the data that is uh, is there in the spacey format. So we allow you to export that data into different formats that then can be easily uh, be exposed. Uh, uh, right, or you can be easily consumed within the Jupyter Lab environment, and you don't need to do any transformation. So the 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 data is right there, and you can just uh, you know build your custom model. So also you know uh, what we do is we allow you uh, um, to easily visualize uh, these DLS data sets, and you can you'll see that in the demo. The and that is the work we have done uh, working with the uh, you know the the OCI data science team. Within that, there is ADS. Uh, a team that we have kind of uh, developed some SDKs to, to easily visualize these uh, data sets. So, so let's, uh, I think we should be good with this. Let me uh, go through the demo. So in terms of, uh, you know, where data labeling sits. So if you go to the hamburger menu and you go to analytics and AI, Data labeling is right here under machine learning, right? So, uh, you know, you click on labeling 
and you land on this screen. So you'll, you, you, within this screen, you'll have uh, resources, you'll have links to documentation, tutorials, and release notes. So you can see, uh, you know, um, or get more in-depth information, uh, uh, what are our APIs, what the SDKs are uh, by looking at the documentation, or you can look at release notes and see, you know, what are the new things that we have released. So as I mentioned, right, right now, we support three types of, uh, uh, you know, uh, annotation formats or three types of, uh, support three types of data formats formats for labeling one is image text and document right and within images as i said you know you we can do uh, you can use it for classification use cases or uh, draw bonding box around around specific objects same thing for text uh, you know you can use it for classification or uh, use it for ner uh, where you can highlight tech, uh, you know spans of text to build a custom nlp model and then last one is document labeling so uh, so the 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 main uh, you know uh, uh, I would say the mo the main module around uh, uh, you know uh, data labeling service is uh, is a data set. So data set is nothing but it comprises of uh, you know uh, uh, images or text or documents. So it's a group of images, text or documents. Once you click on data set page, you will land on uh, you know uh, land on this uh, screen here. So here you have some prerequisites. Uh, these are basic prerequisites that uh, you know um, you need to set up. This is basically allowing you to, uh, once you're creating a data set, uh, allowing you access uh, or uh, to, uh, you know, store the data in the object storage and access that, uh, you know, uh, the data set from the object storage to render it within the, you know, the labeling UI. So uh, pretty minimal, uh, nothing complicated, right? And then within this page, you can also apply some filters to see, uh, you know, uh, what state uh, your data set is if you want to also uh, you know uh, get some information of uh, if, if let's say you have hundreds of uh, you know data sets that have already uh, done some annotation you want to filter and you can use uh, whether it's used for you know it's a single label or multi-label or object detection or entity extraction so uh, to to create a data set what you do is uh, you click on uh, create data set and then you go and add in uh, the name, uh, you know, description and uh, labeling instructions. Again, uh, you know, name is uh, is uh, required, but description and instructions are optional, uh, right? So let's go ahead and quickly show how it works, uh, right? I, I'll not go and create one, but I'll walk you through uh, the initial steps. Then once you uh, click the, you know, the name, uh, right? You can select the format, either it is images, text or documents. So as you can see, when you select the images, uh, you know, we support three types of annotation class. Uh, so for, for classification use cases and for object detection, same thing for text, uh, right? You can, uh, you know, you, you have uh, classification and then you have uh, entity extraction where you can highlight the uh, spans of text and same and then for documentation uh, for documents it's uh, right now only uh, you know for classification use case but we will have uh, other features coming up in, in in the document realm so let's go and select image so i'm going to click on object detection and click next and this is uh, once you, you know you have uh, selected the annotation format you have two options either you can uh, you know uh, upload files from local directory or from object uh, storage right we we will keep on adding other sources uh, in in near future for example you want to pull data from uh, databases or or other uh, you know uh, storage uh, solutions we will have that in in, in future right so um, so anytime you're uploading the files from local directory we uh, we suggest that you create a bucket in the object storage this is where all your uh, you know uh, your files or text or documents will be stored uh, right so uh, you know you, you do that so for example here uh, let's say i already have some uh, some images Yeah, so I've already stored uh, some of my images in object storage bucket. So I'm just going to uh, show that here, right? So uh, what this is, is this is basically, uh, you know, a use case where I want to build an intrusion detection model. So generally, you know, if I live in Pacific Northwest here in US, 
and uh, you know uh, cotton cotton tail rabbits are a huge problem uh, especially when you are uh, you know when when the spring season starts and you know you you have your uh, you know um, uh, with with your tulips and all your shrubs uh, right and vegetables uh, growing season starts you have a huge problem where you know you want to uh, detract these uh, you know these uh, uh, these these animals right so uh, so for that first you want to build uh, you know uh, your uh, your uh, image data set where you've highlighted uh, you know the different images um, uh, for, for the rabbits right so i can create that here and once i do that i just click on create data set and then uh, you know it's uh, it, it basically creates a labeling data set i'm in the interest of time i'm going to cancel it now i've already done one initially right i have uh, created one uh, right uh, call this intrusion detection uh, once you have uh, you know created uh, the data set you land on this page this is where you can uh, see you know if you had provided any labeling instructions what are the labels that are there that you have given you can uh, basically go and edit uh, these labels you can also go and add uh, new labels here right and also you'll get information of uh, you know where this uh, data set is actually stored uh, within the object storage location right uh, and and then uh, you know uh, and then then also uh, you know if you want to go and add new uh, records right you basically go and hit on generate records and you can add new images uh, into into this data set so in this data set details page uh, as you can see it uh, it shows you the activity the name of the file what is the status associated to it and how many of them are labeled or not labeled right and then uh, you have the gallery view this is more uh, you know uh, visual representation of what your images look like and and if you have done any any annotation it will kind of show up in here you can filter uh, your gallery view by uh, the by the status whether it's unlabeled or labeled you can also search by the associated tables uh, right so for example imagine you know it's a classification use case and you have uh, you know 10 labels or it's object detection use case and you have 10 classes and you want to search uh, you know uh, your images for any specific uh, labels associated with them you can do that so let me quickly go through, uh, go what, show you what the labeling UI looks like. So I had, so once you click, uh, you know, to go to the labeling UI, you can either click on the image section, uh, right? Uh, and then you will uh, reach on this uh, UI screen. Here you can, uh, you know, drag and drop, or uh, you can minimize the tools, uh, right? And then we have provided even some shortcut keys to uh, help you in the labeling process. Uh, you know, you have this carousel. We can see, uh, you know, the images that were there before and after this specific image that is shown. You can filter uh, by the status whether it's uh, labeled or unlabeled. So you 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 want to know only, uh, you know, uh, the images uh, which are unlabeled. You want to see them, so you can do that, right? So to do the labeling process uh, right let, let me uh, remove this box so what what i just need to do is uh, is draw the bonding box and and assign so now you know this uh, image has been assigned uh, and then i've drawn the object bo uh, bonding box and you know we are good to go so next is i click save and next right so I've done that, uh, you know, annotation for, uh, you know, uh, basically identifying an object within that image. So once I do that, uh, you know, you can export. So uh, as I mentioned, right, since it's images, we allow you to export the data in different formats. So uh, for for you to export the data in, uh, sorry, for you to use it with the vision service, right? Uh, the proprietary, uh, you know, uh, format is JSON. But uh, if you, for a data scientist persona, you want to export it, it's, uh, you know, you can do it in other formats too, uh, that are available. So let me, uh, you know, get out of this and then uh, quickly show you how it looks like for text. So as I was saying, right, uh, you know, 
this is a use case uh, where we have some job descriptions uh, where you want to highlight uh, you know what is the experience uh, you want to extract uh, you know the experience that they are talking about in that job description you know highlight what are the company they are talking about if there is any any salary that is mentioned uh, you know you want to talk about it or you want to extract uh, those those uh, those text corpus uh, sorry those text uh, you know uh, spans from those corpus right so before you do that right you want to kind of uh, you know uh, highlight these text spans so to build the uh, uh, you know the the, uh, the text data set it's very similar process that you saw for images uh, but then you land on this page right and again we have similar uh, you know uh, similar uh, uh, features in here where you can add new labels you have the uh, you know the uh, the details page within that you can also see the gallery view right So for text, uh, it is, and th again, this is uh, this is a use case for uh, building a named entity, uh, entity recognition where you're highlighting the text spans. So as you can see uh, here, right, uh, you know, I can see there is a mention of salary, right? That's a salary, right? And then there is education, uh, you know, and experience. So that's skills they're asking. Right, so I've kind of uh, done this annotation. Uh, again, you can, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, um, once you have done this annotation, you save next, and then it goes to the next, uh, you know, the next uh, text, right? And it, once you're done with all, you can go back to the same screen and then uh, use uh, the export to export the data, right? So as I said, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, we will have very soon, uh, you know, the custom uh, language model and there, uh, you know, you can then go in and, uh, you know, surface this data set within the custom uh, language workflow to build a custom, uh, you know, sentiment analysis or entity extraction. But uh, as I said, uh, you might want the, it might be a data science persona, they might want to export it in different formats and they can do that here too. So uh, you know, I've shown you uh, you know what the uh, you know the labeling looks like. So quick, let me quickly show you what the integration is with the uh, Vision Service. So uh, so I, I go back to the hamburger menu. I go into AI Services. Click on Vision. So here, as you can see, uh, Vision has some pre-trained models that are already available, uh, right, for classification, object detection, but uh, they also have custom models. This is where, uh, you know, uh, customers are required to bring in their label data set uh, or, and then build, uh, you know, custom solutions for, uh, for image analysis, either for classification or object detection use case. And this is where, uh, you, know, uh, you know, labeling will, uh, or annotation of these images will come into picture, right? So here, uh, you know, I've, as I mentioned earlier, I had built a you know a, a data set where I had labeled uh, you know my rabbits within those uh, images right to de detect uh, right so uh, so as you can see right uh, to to uh, create a custom model right you go into uh, you basically create a project and then uh, within the project you create a model so I'm going to click on create a model uh, tab there and then you either pick the classification or you pick the object detection so once you do that you can see here right uh, what would be your uh, training data set, right? What is your label data set that you want to build your custom model on? So that you either can uh, choose your existing data set or you can uh, create a new data set. So existing data set, uh, right? Uh, we, we can see there uh, it is either you have it in, you know, a data labeling service, which have, we have already done, then they will, those, uh, you know, data sets will actually show up in here, right? You, do, you don't need to do anything. It's uh, as long as uh, you have set the, you know, the, uh, the policies in the object storage to uh, to 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 uh, you know sh showcase here it, it should be fine, right? So that's the integration that we have provided. And if you want to create a new data set, it will actually take you back to uh, you know the labeling uh, UI, and you can uh, you know. Uh, create uh, uh, you know, the labeling data set and go back to the vision and, and, and then surface it within the vision custom vision workflow. So I think uh, as you have seen, right, uh, you know, uh, you know, th this is what we have done. Uh, so with that said, let me stop here and we have my colleague uh, who will talk through the integration with, uh, uh, with OCI data science. Thanks Praveen, let me share my screen. So hi everyone, um, and I hope you can see my screen. 
So my name is Ranjit and uh, I'm here a uh, uh, machine learning engineer here at um, uh, OCI uh, Oracle. Um, so today I'll, I'll be walking you through the model building process that uses the data sets uh, that have been labeled and created using the data labeling service. Uh, so in addition to what Praveen just demonstrated, uh, uh, basically building a model using the custom, uh, custom model building service within the AI services, uh, users who have strong uh, developer persona can also use uh, the OCI data science uh, service to uh, really code and build their models, right? Uh, so this is primarily about that. Uh, so OCI data science service in itself is a, a comprehensive avenue to uh, sort of you know uh, experiment uh, and code and deploy your machine learning models. Uh, the usual place to start would be a notebook session. Um, uh, again, this is a managed uh, Jupyter lab offering from OCI uh, that gives you reproducible uh, uh, environments uh, uh, to really code and experiment. Um, so talking about the use cases, we have uh, two simple use cases, one for object detection and one for uh, name entity recognition uh, that will cover images and text. Uh, for object detection, we have a simple data set. Uh, it's called a query data set. Um, and uh, it contains images of um, aquatic uh, species, uh, such as um, jellyfish, uh, starfish, puffins, uh, penguins, and so on. And uh, we have already labeled this data set uh, using the data labeling service, and uh, we have already uh, exported uh, the data set, uh, you know, that basically creates a dump of the annotations on, uh, on an uh, object storage. Uh, so once you have the data labeled and uh, created, the next obvious step is to uh, go about uh, the model building. And in that course, first step would be to, uh, first step would be data acquisition, uh, which means uh, onboarding the data set here on this notebook session. Um, so we have a couple of options to do that. Um, the most uh, simplest, the simplest one would be to just use the uh, OCI um, CLI to bulk download the data set from the object storage, because essentially all your uh, data is on is on the object storage object bucket, um, along with their annotations. Um, a more convenient or succinct way of doing this would be to use the uh, ADS. Uh, so ADS is basically, uh, is ADS stands for Accelerated Data Science. It's an SDK, it's a Python-based SDK um, that really allows, uh, that gives a friendly uh, user interface to, uh, to build machine learning pipelines. Um, and uh, <clears throat> it really covers nearly all the aspects of model building right from the data acquisition to um, to uh, data exploration, to feature engineering, to model selection, all the way up to model evaluation and uh, uh, model interpretation. Um, so um, uh, one can set up authentication of the ADS using a resource principle, either a resource principle or even using the OCI uh, keys. The resource principle method is a bit easier to do, um, uh, to, do to, to, to set up the authentication. Uh, once you have the authentication set up, you could just use the list data set API offered uh, within ADS and uh, this will uh, primarily take the compartment ID uh, within which you have created your data sets. So uh, this will then give you a list of all the data sets that you have created in your compartment uh, along with uh, all the metadata that uh, the data set contains um, along with their status, what kind of scenarios do they uh, catered to and uh, uh, much more. Um, so if you want to zoom into one of the data sets, like for example, this one, uh, uh, you would want to take the OSIT, OSIT of this data set um, and really invoke the, uh, you know, read label data API, right? So uh, this will then fetch all the records, like uh, all the images and their associated uh, uh, annotations. So uh, you could see that, you know, it gives a data frame that has the uh, content uh, column and the annotations. The content has all the images in below format, uh, which, is, uh, which is a Python's way of, uh, you know, uh, representing uh, an image and the annotations. Uh, so optionally, you could also change the format here uh, to YOLO. So uh, this would 
then convert these annotations to YOLO format. So this will really come handy in case uh, you are using, uh, you are planning to, uh, you know, use a YOLO uh, uh, object detection uh, algorithm or and framework. Uh, so you, then you could simply you know, plug this, uh, plug the data into the framework for model training. Um, to add a visual, so before before this, uh, so like there are other ways also to you know fetch data from uh, the uh, data labeling service, uh, especially when your data size is kind of huge. Uh, so in that case, you could use another API called Label Dataset uh, Reader. Now this gives you a Python generator with which you could iterate um, um, on uh, iterate the records. So really, the, you could you know uh, load data in batches in chunks using this API. So you could do this either ways that basically depends on your use case. And obviously this is, there is the other one which basically invokes the uh, OCI uh, CLI. Now, uh, as you would have already learned uh, that, uh, you know, uh, a data labeling service uh, also allows export of data into these uh, uh, custom formats or rather, you know, uh, more popular formats like YOLO, COCO and Pascal for object detection. So if you do that, uh, 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 you would want to invoke the uh, OCI CLI to bulk download your uh, uh, your uh, images and their respective annotations. Uh, so now that you have this data frame, uh, just to add a visual flair to your analysis, you could uh, you know use the render box mounting box API offered within the ADS uh, library to uh, to uh, basically render your image. Uh, along with the along with their annotations, so uh, this way you know you sort of assert that your uh, you know your uh, images and your annotations uh, really reconcile. Uh, so now we have this data frame and uh, we have images and their respective annotations. And the next set of steps really depends on the kind of framework, the kind of algorithm that you would want to use. Uh, so for example, if you want to use a YOLO based model, uh, you should have uh, uh, I mean, you could just dump your uh, dump the data frame uh, 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 using the YOLO format, or let's say if you, if you are using a Facebook uh, Detectron uh, from the Facebook Detectron library, uh, a model uh, you would want to use a Coco model, or if you if you are coding a very uh, you know custom PyTorch based model, you will have to you know uh, write your own data uh, data set and data loader that fetches the data from this data frame. So basically the next set of steps of model building really depends on, on your scenario, on, on what kind of algorithm framework you're using. So here we are using a simple uh, YOLO based model. Um, and um, uh, really the, the, the steps to uh, invoke the training uh, of the model is framework specific. So I'm not going to go very deep into it. Um, uh, uh, the the only change that is required for uh, uh, for a custom uh, uh, training is the uh, number of classes here in the main configuration file, um, and then you know you could really invoke the training. Um, in the interest of time, I have already trained a model uh, using uh, the uh, data set here, um, and uh, uh, if we have to test a few images, uh, get a few inferences from that model. On a few test images, uh, uh, you know, we could just invoke the model to get the inferences. So uh, now this gives a uh, uh, this gives inferences uh, from the trained model uh, that was trained on the uh, uh, data set that we just saw, and uh, this does fairly well uh, fairly well in, in identifying the the species on the on these uh, test uh, te uh, test images. Um, so that's uh, that's about the object detection uh, use case. Um, so I'll give a real a real quick walkthrough on the uh, um, text NER uh, use case. Uh, so for text NER use case, again we have uh, another data set. Um, it's called Reuters articles, um, and here uh, the text is primarily articles from the from Reuters, um, and uh, we have assigned entities such as uh, person, location, um, country, and so on uh, to the text, um, and uh, uh, that's the lab uh, that that's the labeling uh, that that is all the labeling does. 
So uh, once the labeling is done, again, we could uh, more or less follow the same set of steps to uh, then create a, a named entity recognition model. So again, this data set has been labeled and um, the and has been already exported onto the uh, object object bucket. Now, like I said, uh, the uh, the way to sort of import the data set into this notebook session and to you know create a model, uh, the largely the the uh, set of steps are similar uh, from what we saw in the object detection use case. Um, so again, we are using the uh, ADS library to uh, uh, fetch the data set, um, and here uh, you know uh, we are directly using the uh, the the location of the metadata find that is that uh, that represents the annotation uh, that rep represents the uh, snapshot uh, of the uh, uh, data set so you could either use the oc of the data set or use or use the uh, uh, location of the uh, metadata file directly it works both ways um so yeah you could then fetch the uh, data set and again it will uh, give you the data in a in a pandas data frame um, and uh, like one of the columns called the content will have uh, all the text uh, uh, files uh, the annotations will have the you know the associated uh, annotations and uh, this basically uh, represent the uh, text spans that we have drawn uh, here uh, the the offset uh, the uh, start offset and the end offset and the um, the labels right so this is what the uh, data frame looks like um and again here uh, you could you know uh, visually inspect uh, the uh, the annotations using the render um, ner api offered from within the uh, ads to get a sense of what your annotations look like and uh, just ensure that uh, they really you know reconcile no. Uh, so again, now we have our data frame and uh, the next set of steps, like in the previous case, depends on the use case that you are trying to, depends on the you know uh, algorithm and the framework that you are trying to invoke. So here we are using uh, Spacey, a popular uh, uh, NLP framework to train uh, NER models and, and much more. Um, so uh, since Spacey in, uh, expects data in uh, Spacey format, uh, we would need to convert the data into Spacey format and ADS uh, for that um, uh, purpose also exposes this API called to Spacey to convert the data to a Spacey format. Now, this could also have been exported from the DLS um, in the Spacey format um uh, using this export functionality as as praveen was uh, uh demonstrating uh, a while ago so either ways like you could either you know export the data itself into a specific format specific format or you could change here so uh, it, it works both ways uh so yeah you have a data in specific format and then again you need to then invoke the framework specific uh you know steps to uh, you know, invoke the training. So uh, again, I'll not go uh, any deeper into this, uh, but this uh, Spacey training basically invokes uh, this pipeline, which is uh, which comprises of a uh, token to vec for representing your text and NER, which basically internally uses a conditional random field um, uh, 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 algorithm to, uh, to do um, uh, NER. Um, so again, in the interest of time, I have uh, already uh, created a model uh, using this data set um, and uh, just a little test of the model that we have here. So yeah, we can test the model and you know render the uh, the inference using the uh, spacey uh, spacey's display C uh, uh, feature. Uh, so basically, this recognizes that. You know this particular entity is a company. So uh, that's all from my side. Uh, I think I'll stop here and uh, I'll hand it back to uh, Praveen uh, for his uh, closing remarks. Sure. Thanks, Ranjit. <clears throat> 
Yes, so uh, you know we have a bunch of resources that you can take a look at it, uh, right? We have service documentation. We have some blog posts, uh, uh, you know, talking about what is the overall capability, and then uh, you know how can you build better models with uh, annotated data. This is very similar to what uh, Ranjit ra ran over through the demo. When we have YouTube videos where uh, you know talk in depth about uh, the service, you can take a look at it. And lastly, very useful resource uh, is is we have live labs, uh, and this live lab. Uh, is available for you guys to try it out and you know it basically walks you through a through a healthcare use case uh, for a classification uh, you know um, for a classification uh, if, uh, where you want to classify cells into certain types uh, using the labeling service and you can do that in in uh, in, in bulk way too uh, right uh, so you have uh, we have uh, published some uh, you know um, some uh, some steps on how to do that uh, right and then once you do that then you can uh, how are you Going to use the vision service uh, uh, to to build a custom classification model. So please go ahead and try, try out the live lives too. Uh, or if you have any more uh, additional questions, uh, you know, feel free to send me an email. My email is listed here. Uh, and uh, as I said, right, uh, you know, keep uh, looking at the release notes uh, or within the documentation uh, as we uh, evolve this service and and add more capabilities to uh, to to uh, you know um, to uh, either increase uh, uh, with respect to uh, accommodating more data types or uh, you know how uh, we, we will be solving the at scale uh, labeling use cases so with that said i will stop here and please uh, you know uh, if there are any questions uh, that we can answer uh, let us know uh, I, i've been looking at some uh, uh, some some questions uh, right over uh, over the uh, you know the, over the Q and A. Uh, one uh, you know fr from Jorge uh, right mentioning about the notebook examples. Yes, we are working on publishing these notebook examples uh, uh, right within GitHub uh, space uh, right uh, that that you can then use uh, right and you know um, will be available very soon. All right, we'll give it a moment. Um, if anyone has questions to put in that Q&A box, please feel free. Um, I also just popped up a final poll because we always like to get a little feedback from folks about how the session went. Um, but otherwise, I just wanna say big thank you to Praveen and to Rajit for coming and sharing uh, information about data labeling. Um, as they mentioned, there's plenty more to come. So keep tuned on that. Um, and I will be sharing out uh, the resources mentioned um, along with the replay and the slides. So you can dive a little deeper into this information and um, do some more work on that and discover even more about it. So thank you so much for showing up and showing us all of this great information. Thank you to our audience for uh, joining us today and we will see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>